Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. Today we're going to be talking all about my mastitis and clogged duct journey. I have now had this twice with my last baby, number four baby. I have never had this before with my first three. Now that I've had it with my fourth, I've actually had it twice in two months, which is crazy to me. I want to start this video by just saying I am not a professional in this area. I'm only giving you guys my journey and what I went through and the things that I tried, even some things that I read about or that I learned actually from you guys on Instagram. I got tons of advice and things that I could try. I'm gonna share all of those things with you guys. If you've never had this before and you're watching this video, at least you know what to look out for. If you feel like you might have mastitis and you're watching this video, then maybe it'll really let you know like this is what it is and this is what you need to do. I definitely recommend that you either call your OB, talk to a lactation consultant, or even Milky Mama is a great resource to have. They are on Instagram, they have a website, they have products that they sell, which I love. I have been using Milky Mama for a long time now. I love their brownies, um, their cookies, their herbal supplements, all of those things. They have lemonades that are great for lactation, whether you're breastfeeding or you're pumping. The woman that owns the company, she is well-versed in all of those things. Anything that has to do with breastfeeding, pumping, anything that has to do with the breasts, really. And she's always sharing her advice and her tips and her tricks and all of those things on Instagram and on the website. She has like a blog on there that she talks about all of those things. So that is a great place to get some information. If you're not following Milky Mama already on Instagram, definitely do that. I will leave the handle here and also in the description box if you want to check it out. But before we get started, I definitely want to say make sure you give this video a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new because I'd love to have you here. And then let's go ahead and jump right in <laughs> to all the things that have to do with this and hopefully help you guys out if you are going through this, if you're trying to just learn about it, any of those things. Okay, first off, I'm going to start with the definitions of a clogged duct or mastitis the difference between them and both of their definitions so let's start with if you have a clogged duct that is an area of the breast where milk flow is not able to get through now mastitis is inflammation of the breast that is caused by a block of milk flow infection or even a severe allergy mainly y'all if you get a clogged duct and you do not take care of it or it gets worse it will turn into mastitis which is an infection so the symptoms of both of those are very similar so it's kind of hard to figure out exactly which one you have especially right in the very beginning the only difference between them is going to be you're gonna have a higher fever with mastitis and you're also gonna have like flu like symptoms with mastitis which is like body aches body chills fever a super high fever all of that kind of stuff is what you're gonna feel with mastitis rather than having a clogged duct but let me go through some of the symptoms first. Number one is gonna be like a hard breast or hard nipple. Either the whole breast is gonna hurt really bad or you're gonna notice that there's a, could be like a wedge looking area on your breast that looks really hard. You could even have a nipple that seems like it's erect the whole time, like it literally will not go down. It's gonna be sore or painful to the touch. Can also be hot to the touch, like super hot and you're also going to have maybe a rash around there you'll notice like red streaks going across the affected area or maybe even all over around your breast and around your nipple now with a clogged duct you might even see like a white bump on your nipple a lot of times with a clogged duct it's going to mainly be closer to like the nipple area right there is where it could be clogged where it could be you know not just not coming out but in other cases you could definitely have it further back in there which then again, you're really gonna notice like one part of your breast, almost like a lump in your breast, and you're gonna notice that it's there and it's gonna hurt really, really bad. Like I said earlier, if you do not treat those or you don't get that milk out, it will turn into an infection, which again, it turns into mastitis. Now mastitis can come on pretty abruptly, which that's kind of what happened with me. It was like one second I was fine and the next minute full on flu-like symptoms, all of these things were happening to me and I had no idea first time around I had no idea what the heck was wrong with me I literally thought like I'm just getting sick like, my body just can't take it anymore I've been doing too much 
I'm getting the flu, I'm getting the cold, like something. I'm getting some kind of sickness. I had no idea that it had to do with just my breast until day one or day, until the end of day one, going into day two, when I started seeing the redness around my breast, my boob really, really started hurting, especially if I was trying to breastfeed my baby or pump at any time. And I had told my mom about it. She told me she thought I had mastitis. I called my OB and they confirmed it, sent me antibiotics immediately. And I will say that majority of the time you are going to need antibiotics to get rid of mastitis, especially to cut the time down. So I would urge you, unless you don't like taking medications and that's just not your thing, but if you're okay with that, I just, I would please call your OB and let them know what's going on. And if they can confirm that it is mastitis, get those antibiotics as fast as you can because for me, the minute I started taking them, I started noticing a little bit better, you know, how I was feeling. I wasn't getting like the fever as high. I didn't have as much body aches. My boobs still hurt. It took like three, four days for it to finally just feel like I was back to, I don't wanna say normal because it does take a little bit longer for the soreness to go away, but it did take three or four days for me to feel better. And had I not taken those antibiotics, who knows what would have happened. So I definitely recommend to take those and call your OB immediately to try to get something to help you. Now, if you only have a clogged duct, they're not gonna give you antibiotics for that. They only give you antibiotics if you have mastitis and they know for sure that you have mastitis. Now, here are the reasons why you could be getting either of these problems. Number one can be a bad latch when your baby tries to latch onto your nipple, um, or even if you're trying to pump and you like position the pump wrong, it's almost like you bruise your nipple with the pump. You could totally do that. And that could be one of the reasons why it starts to get clogged. And then of course with baby breastfeeding on you, if they are not latching correctly, it will definitely do the same exact thing, kind of a bruise of the nipple or the breast and that can cause these problems to arise pretty quickly and i think that the second time around this happened to me that is what happened and my baby never has a problem latching but i fell asleep on the couch with him on me we both fell asleep while he was on my breast and he fell asleep like clenched to my nipple and when i woke up and saw him like that and went to move him he was like yanking on it which sounds super painful just to say that but that's what he was doing and at the time it didn't really hurt or anything i just kind of like repositioned him pulled him off and laid him down with me but within about 30 40 minutes i started noticing that my my nipple and my breasts were super tender and i it kind of triggered me from the first time and i was like oh no i think i know what this is and i immediately tried to start taking my antibiotics and all those things and even though i started taking them right away it got worse within like 20 minutes of that of me noticing that and probably the first day and a half was miserable. It was horrible. It was like, it wasn't getting better. It was getting worse by the minute. For me, I definitely think the second time around was because of that, was because he just was pulling on my nipple. He was not on it correctly. He shouldn't have even been on it, falling asleep on it like that. It's just not good for that. And also not emptying the breasts either. And I don't think that he did that either that time because obviously we fell asleep and the way that we were positioned it wasn't like he was just there and he could let go. It was kind of like he was hanging on to me when he fell asleep to make sure he didn't move. I don't know, it was weird. But the next reason why you could get it is not emptying the breast enough. So you really need to make sure that every time you breastfeed or that you pump, that you're getting all the milk out that you can, literally emptying your breasts for one, that triggers your body to make more milk, which is great. Number two, it's definitely gonna prevent you from getting mastitis or a clogged duct because you're getting all the milk out. There's no milk left in there to dry up or get stuck anywhere, which is one of the reasons why I like to pump after I breastfeed, especially if I feel like he just didn't eat for very long and he fell asleep super quickly. I always try to go back and make sure that I put the pumps on just to get anything left in. Sometimes I'll only get like a couple drops out. Sometimes I'll get maybe a half an ounce or an ounce out, um, but at least I know that I emptied my breasts again to make sure I make more milk, but also to try to prevent this from happening. <laughs> you could also get this if you have a very inconsistent feeding or pumping schedule. So if it's just like super random throughout the day, you know, 
20 minutes here, 30 minutes there, and then it's four or five hours later. That could be one of the reasons why it starts happening or maybe keeps happening to you. If you have a more consistent schedule throughout the day and you're emptying your breast, you're probably not gonna get this. And if you do, then it's definitely gonna be another problem as to why you're, you are getting it. That is another thing that you can try to do to prevent it. If you make sure that you're on a good schedule, you're emptying your breast, the baby has a good latch, or you're putting the pumps on correctly, then and the flange over your nipples correctly, then you probably won't get it. But then again, I'm not a professional. I'm just guessing here because I've read up on it and that's what they say. And then also those are the things that have happened to me. <laughs> So now I want to move on to how to treat it if you have either of these things. Like I said earlier, number one is going to be antibiotics for mastitis. Again, if they don't think you have mastitis and it's just the clogged duct, they're not going to give you antibiotics, but at least call and see because if, it's, if it is mastitis, you want to get on those antibiotics like ASAP. Make sure you're getting them in your system, you're helping your body fight this thing and get rid of it. The next thing is to do a hot compress, which all that means is that you have like a hot towel, um, as hot as you can get it, that you can stand it, you know, not don't burn your skin or anything like that, but something that you can use and press it on your boob, either the whole boob or at least the area that is affected that really, really is sore or painful and hurts. Maybe it's really red there. Make sure that you're pushing down on that, almost like massaging your breast right there to try to get the milk or anything that's stuck there out, massaging it, breaking it up. And I will tell y'all, when you put that hot towel on your breast, it feels so good. When you're in that much pain, anything like that just feels amazing. Now they do actually have products for this. Like they have they, the, these gel, I don't even know how to explain them. I guess they're like gel cups that you can put on your boob. I've seen some that you can heat up to make hot and you can also freeze them to make them cold. So if you wanna do, you know, 20 minutes hot and then maybe do a, a cooler one later, you know, on and off like that, that would probably be really good. But I will say the hot just feels so, so good. And going along with that, another thing you can do is soak it in hot water with Epsom salt Epsom salt is so good for your body and if you have mastitis and you have body aches and body chills, for me, that is my favorite thing. Like I feel so crappy, but when I get in the bathtub, a super hot bath and I put lots of Epsom salt in there and I just soak in the bath, my body just feels so much better. When I needed to try to pump or breastfeed, my boob and my nipple hurt so bad that I was literally in tears just thinking about having to try to get this milk out. And that is another thing that you have to do. When you feel like you have the clogged duct or mastitis, do not stop trying to breastfeed or pump. That is like the worst thing you can do, even though you wanna stop so bad because all you think is like, there's no way I'm putting a baby on this or I'm putting a pump on this and making myself in more pain. I, <laughs> I don't wanna say this to like scare people if you've never had this before or you're afraid of it happening to you, but it is literally the most painful thing I've ever gone through. I almost feel like it was almost worse than childbirth. And I tried to push through the baby feeding on this side when I was in pain. This, the second time around was definitely worse than the first. I don't know why, but it definitely was just way over the top. And when he, when I would put him on that side, I mean, I was like biting my teeth and cringing and moaning and crying and trying to just stick it out and it was so painful, I couldn't handle it. And so I decided, okay, from now on, I'm only gonna feed him on my good side and I'm gonna pump on the other side because at least then I can actually control how much suction it's getting to start with and try to like ease my way into that full feeding or pumping session. So instead of just like putting a hot towel on before I pumped, I would actually get in the bathtub submerge my body and really like make sure that you know the water was like up to here all the way over my boob with all that epsom salt in there and i would soak in there for 20 minutes and then i would try to like massage my breasts and then i would try to put the pump on and if it still felt like my nipple was just so sore i would soak a little bit longer and then i would put the pump on and y'all, I have my LV pumps, which is great. So I could sit in the bathtub, you know, obviously don't put the pumps underwater, but I could sit in the bathtub with the water up to here and I would hold the pump right over my boob 
and when it would start suctioning I would kind of hold it away from it until I could feel it start pulling at my nipple and then I would slowly like push it towards my body to make sure you know it was getting the full suction and then obviously that it wasn't you know it was latching right it was in the flange correctly and then I would sit there and I would like just Oh my gosh it was like cringy just holding it there like as it kept sucking and then after a while i could get a little used to it it was still painful but i could at least get a little used to it and maybe i could up the suction a little bit to make sure that i was trying to get out anything that i could and y'all i probably sat there for 20 minutes pumping and i would get either less than half an ounce or maybe half an ounce and i remember thinking like my boob is so rock hard and hurts so bad. It feels so full. How the heck am I only getting half an ounce to an ounce out of this thing? Like sitting here forever. When you feel that milk, the letdown, and your boob is hurting, oh my goodness, y'all. It hurts so bad. And I feel so bad for saying that because I don't want to scare you guys, but... It really was so painful and it never let up. It wasn't one of those things like, you know when in the beginning when you first start breastfeeding your baby, your nipples are obviously sore and chapped and hurt and every single time you put that baby on or every single time you have to pump those first like five to 10 suctions, ooh, it's just like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Then after a while your breast kind of gets a little softer your nipple gets a little softer and you start kind of getting used to it and then after a while you don't feel that pain anymore that doesn't happen when you have mastitis it's like every single suction is like the first one and it hurts the whole dang time you might feel just a little bit less of the pain to try to push through that and make sure you try to get as much out as you can there were definitely some times where i would pull the pump off and i could see like almost like jelly-like strings of milk hanging off of my nipple like it was suctioning out a clog which obviously was good because it was getting it out slowly but it was like little bits at a time i don't know if that was tmi for y'all i'm sorry i should have said that before but that's what happens y'all i mean <laughs> But that was probably the one thing that I did consistently was every single time, which really y'all was like every three hours, my boob, it was rock hard the whole time, but I could really tell when it was, it felt like it was full of milk on top of it being rock hard. And my nipple y'all was like twice the size. It would never go down. I could not wear a bra and the bras that I did wear were super loose. Like they're kind of like uh, yoga or sports bras that are, they don't have any padding. They're not very tight around that area, but at least it felt like something holding it all together, but just not pushing down on my boob. I could not wear any of my nursing bras. They hurt so bad. So something a little bit looser. You don't want to wear no bra, because I did try that one time, because I thought, well, I don't need anything on there. But my shirt alone, just like barely touching my nipple. Ah, nope, it was not good. <laughs> I definitely think, you know, try to make sure your clothes or your bra is a little bit looser, not so tight to you, it'll feel a little bit better. I forgot I have my pump right here. So this is the LB pump that I have. These are the wireless pumps. You just, you know, uh, press this button, it turns on. You press this button to start it, and this goes, you know, higher or lower in the section. And so this was perfect, like I said earlier. I would just slowly, I would turn it on, like listen to it suction already, and then I would slowly put it on my nipple and wait for it to start pulling at it, and then kind of like hold it, hold it, and then I would start pushing it closer to my body as I could like take it. <laughs> but these were great because like I said, I didn't have to get out of the bathtub and set everything up or put a bra on. I would just hold it with my hand right here while I was sitting in the bathtub and that way if I needed to stop for a little bit and then like soak my boob again I could plus y'all I love my bath so I was down to just lay in there as long as I could and then you know take it off put it back on I do want to say though I did end up supplementing with formula for my baby because I was afraid that I wasn't going to be able to produce enough on this side with everything going on and my left side is actually the one that makes more anyways so I was constantly feeding him on me here and then whatever I'd pumped out of here I would try to give him in a bottle if there was any which there wasn't a whole lot 
and I was afraid that I was gonna be stressing out about him not getting enough food or what if he needed to eat but I'm sitting in the bathtub because I'm hurting and I'm trying to pump this boob and so many things so I asked my husband like just grab a little bit of formula and that is what we did so I would mix a little bit of formula with um, breast milk and give him a bottle every once in a while or my husband would whenever I needed to get in the bath or do any of those things giving me a little bit of a break but then at the same time I was making sure that I was pumping or if he was feeding then I was trying to pump both sides to make sure I was getting everything out please don't feel bad if you need to supplement when this happens it's gonna be okay just because I supplemented with formula I wasn't thinking in my mind like well that's it I'm just gonna get through this and then we're gonna be done he's just gonna drink formula I knew that I still wanted to breastfeed my baby I actually love breastfeeding my baby I love the bond I love the time with him it's something that has come second nature now and I just love it and I'm not ready to quit and even though this has happened to me yes it sucks but I just I wasn't ready to just give it up I knew that I was gonna be supplementing I'm still breastfeeding him and now that it's done it's definitely dropped a ton on this side I have to pump more often to try to like lift it back up I feed him on the side more often and I start on the side pretty much every single time that I breastfeed him to try to trigger this side to make a little bit more milk than it normally does or a little bit more milk than it has been lately since I've gotten rid of this mastitis so it's definitely going to drop down but don't let that discourage you and like I said if you need to supplement with formula if you don't have like a stash or anything then don't feel bad for doing that I promise you it'll be fine your baby's going to be fine um, I will let y'all know what formula I use because I know people are going to ask but I love Gerber. I have used Gerber formula for every single one of my babies after they stopped uh, breastfeeding and I never had a problem with them and it's like to me one of the most gentlest formulas on their tummy and closest to like breast milk um, for them. Now obviously if you use something else and you say it's great with your baby that's awesome. That's why they have so many different brands because Everybody's different, every baby is different, just depends on what works for your baby. But I will say, Gerber was something that I used with all my kids, it worked great with them. I always use the Gentle or the Probiotic, like for fussiness and gas, but both of those were awesome. So that is what I got for baby boy. I got him the Probiotic one because sometimes he can have little tummy issues. So I definitely had that one on hand for him and he was totally fine with it, no problems. And I still actually have some just in case we need to, you know, here and there if I need to, you know, pump more or, or something is, is happening, then at least I have it there and it's my backup. But now I'm back to trying to pump and if you haven't watched my breastfeeding and pumping video, I will leave it linked here. But in that video, I share with y'all a little trick to try to trick your body into thinking that you your baby had a growth spurt and you need more milk or maybe even that you're feeding twins <laughs> even though you're not it tricks your body into thinking that and it makes it make more milk so that is what I've been doing with my pumping schedules I've been trying to pump in a sequence that tricks my body into making more milk so that I can boost my milk again and make sure that I have enough for baby boy because he is getting bigger and he is hungry a lot <laughs> So the next thing you can do is if you have a haka like this, which I definitely love these things. I don't say that I use this thing all the time, but in the beginning I used it quite a lot because it was just so much easier to pop it on one side while he breastfed on the other side and it would catch all the milk that would leak out. And I could, you know, fill this thing up to here just from it sitting on that side while he was feeding on the other side. So I definitely love this because then you don't lose any milk at all in your nursing bra or in a milk pad or breast pad I saw on Milky Mama on Instagram I saw where the they shared a video of a woman that had a clogged duct and she had put Epsom salt water in here and then suctioned it to her boob and you can kind of lay back and then the water the salt water is gonna be right on that nipple kind of like as it's suctioning it also has all of that right there which again is supposed to help pull anything out that's really what Epsom salt does is it pulls out the impurities it pulls out all the bad stuff so obviously if you need if you need something to come out of your breast it's probably one of the best things that you can do and it does feel super soothing especially when the water is really hot in there and of course the Epsom salt y'all for me I, I like I literally live by Epsom salt every single bath I take I always put it in there even if I feel totally fine I put it in there because it just makes my body feel so much better so I put that in there 
I laid on the bed and I just kind of leaned back watching TV and it kind of soaked that area. But then I could see that like the milk was coming out. Obviously I can't keep that milk. I had to pour it out, but I was trying to get it to, you know, if I have any clogs in there to get those out, but then also having an infection there, trying to get anything out that could possibly keep that infection going. I never saw like a big goop of dried up milk that had come out or anything like that, but I definitely do think that this did help because it kind of took the place of me like soaking in the bathtub for 20 minutes, having my boobs submerged. It did take um, that place every once in a while if I wasn't trying to get in the bathtub every like 30 minutes or to an hour. So if I needed to try to just get a little bit of relief and maybe try to feel like Okay, I really need to get some milk out because I cannot get anything out right now. I would put this on because it's obviously suctioning, which is kind of like a breast pump. And then I would sit and I would massage my breast and I would take my finger and I would go from the, the outside in and I would push down to the nipple and then I'd go up here and I'd push down to the nipple. And I would do that pretty much all over and going from the bottom and pushing up. And that really helps massage the breast and get that milk flow to obviously come out. And then you that's when you can really tell if you have a clogged duct where it's at. And mine was always like right on the side right here because everywhere else I would push and it kind of, even though it was hard, you could kind of feel it kind of deflate almost and like feel like it was pushing something down. And when I would push on this hard part right here, milk would just come out but even after I did that, that still was just super hard, just like a big line right here. And so I would constantly be massaging that. I definitely think that helped me in the long run. Um, so make sure that you try to massage, even if you have your pump on, if you have like the LV or any other kind of pump on your breast as it's pumping, try to like push down and pushing from the outside in and pushing towards the nipple to like get that milk to come down. That can definitely help you. Another thing they do actually sell like a breast massaging tool that you can use and it either vibrates or does something. I don't have one, but I've heard of them and I've read about them and seen them before. You can take it and literally like what I did with my finger, but instead it's a tool that you push down on the boob and like push towards the nipple. Like I was saying, the movement and the vibrating that it does helps kind of break those, um, break the milk up and get it down and coming out pretty simple there but they do have tools that you can use for that if you're interested and you don't want to use your hand or your finger the next thing is going to be Tylenol and ibuprofen I definitely alternated these ibuprofen is great for swelling and your boob like I said is going to be rock hard it's going to be swollen it is literally going to look like it's going to pop like your boob is going to be so big looking and then it's going to have the red streaks all over it and your nipple's probably gonna either be flat because it's so, your boob is so full, or it's gonna be sticking straight out like mine was and hard as a rock and hurts and hurts. So like I said, obviously with it being swollen, the best thing you can do for any kind of inflammation is ibuprofen. That is gonna help you. If it doesn't totally, it's not gonna you know make your boob not be swollen anymore because you have so many other things going on with infection and everything else but it's definitely gonna help with the pain in that area. And then obviously Tylenol is for pain, so I would just alternate between the two. I do that with my kids too when they have fevers, that helps. So not only was the ibuprofen helping with my inflammation, but then I was taking the Tylenol because I had fever the whole time. So that definitely helped. So I do recommend that. And then the last thing I'm gonna recommend, I actually got from all of you guys on Instagram, when I talked about this in my post, it is Sunflower Lecithin. And I immediately went to Amazon and ordered some. So this is the bottle that I got. It is huge. I'm so happy. The only thing I want to say, y'all, is these are like ginormous horse pills. Like, look at this thing. This thing is huge, which I don't have any problem with. I can take like two of these at one time, it's no big deal, but I know a lot of people do have an issue with big horse pills. So I did see that they actually sell this in like powder and liquid form, I think. So if you are not into big pills, definitely check out Amazon or any kind of vitamin store and I'm sure that they'd have this in powder or liquid form for you to take it that way. But a lot of you said that this for one is great to have to be taking when you have the mastitis and the clogged duct. It's, it's gonna help you 
get through that but it's also great to take just daily like with your prenatal to prevent it from ever happening again and obviously I've already been through it twice. I didn't get this in time to take it while I was going through the mastitis, but I'm taking it now because I definitely don't wanna go through that ever again. And if it's gonna help with that, I am down. So this bottle, it's from the Now Company, and it is 1200 milligrams um, and 200 of these soft gels of 1200 milligrams. It says on here to take two a day after you eat food or with food. And I've only been taking one a day so far, just cause they're so big and I'm just starting it. I didn't wanna like overdo it and then make myself sick or something, make me feel yucky. Almost every single comment and every single person that uh, DM'd me talked about this and I was like if all of these people are telling me about this then it's got to be good I definitely think this would be something to check out and to try out I mean what is it gonna hurt nothing it's either gonna help you or it's not I'm really hoping that this is gonna be my savior and helping me not get um, clogged ducts or mastitis ever again definitely don't want to go through it a third time this bottle right here though y'all was like ten dollars on amazon i do know that i don't remember the other brand it's definitely like a lactation brand it sells this but their bottle was twenty dollars i did learn from a friend of mine that is actually a doula and she told me i asked her like which one do you recommend and she said either was good this brand or the other brand but she said that the other one is definitely more purist it's purist in form i guess you're getting the most out of that, so I'm sure that's why it was $20 compared to this being $9. But because I was just trying it out, I was like, well, let me get the $9 one and see how it works. And then if I really want to, I'll spend $20 on the other one. I can't remember the name, but if you guys look this up on Amazon, you'll see what I mean. You'll see it right away. They're literally right next to each other. So I will have this link down below. Actually, I'll have everything that I talk about today linked down below. For you guys if you guys want to try it or you need it or whatever you know if you're like i i'm desperate i'm gonna try anything and everything so like i said y'all this is something great to take if you feel like you have a clogged duct or mastitis but also just daily to prevent it from happening this is really what's going to help you with the clogged duct it actually breaks it down so that it doesn't get stuck like that it's going to help break that down and keep it from getting hard or getting clogged and that obviously in turn helps you not get mastitis because then you won't have an infection <laughs> um i forgot to show y'all so this is the epsom salt that i use i always use dr teal's i love it this one is the therapeutic soak it eases aches and pains it's the ultra fine crystals i love this one i always get i get all different ones like sometimes i'll get the lavender one sometimes i've gotten the Himalayan salt one. I've had the detox one. I've, I've used them all, but this one was really good for the mastitis just because it's definitely going to help with the soreness and the aches and the pains that I was having with like those flu like symptoms. So I definitely recommend Dr. Teal's. Obviously, if you just get any regular Epsom salt that you can find at like CVS and Walgreens, those are great too. But I love Dr. Teal's. Plus, they, this smells so good when you put it in the bathtub. It's a very calming scent. Okay, now that we've gotten over all of that, I will let y'all know my just a little bit of my journey with all of this. Like I said before, my first three children, I never had a problem with this. I would never had mastitis or clogged duct. I've heard of this before, but I just, I never read up on it because, you know, it's kind of one of those things that you're like, well, that won't happen to me. Oh, it happened to her, but it's not gonna happen to me. It's no big deal. Well, it did. I guess I should have known, you know, four kids, it's gonna happen at some point. And now that I'm on my fourth, I've gotten really good at breastfeeding and, you know, sticking to a plan and knowing what I want and how I want to do it and making sure that I stick through the hard times to get to the good times of breastfeeding. If you are exclusively breastfeeding or exclusively pumping, it's super common to get a clogged duct or it, for it to turn into mastitis. Um, but obviously I wasn't thinking about any of those things. The first time that I got it, he was, I think he was two months old. Yeah, he was about two and a half months old and I got it. And again, like I said earlier in this video, I was getting those flu-like symptoms like overnight. I mean, the fever 
and I was taking Tylenol and like my fever would break and then I would get the body chills and then the next thing I know I was like on fire again like my head and my neck felt like I was uh, so hot and I would get you know a washcloth a cool washcloth and I put it on my head and I put it on my neck and then my body just felt so uncomfortable and just that aching feeling so I'd get in the bathtub and then I'd get out and it was just like that up and down you know you're cold you're hot you're cold you're hot your body aches your fever you got the chills you're sweating now you're not sweating because you're cold I mean <laughs> all of those things all of those symptoms were happening my boobs started hurting but again I was kind of thinking like my body aches so bad like maybe that's why my boob hurts too it's like Part of my body obviously and then when i was texting my mom about it and told her i was sick when i started telling her what was going on she was like jessica i really think that this is mastitis like you have got to call your ob right now like don't wait any longer because if you let this go on it is going to get worse and it's going to get more painful you've got to call them and finally you know mom's always right so i was like okay fine i called up my doctor and i could talk to one of the nurses i told her what was going on of course she's like well is it red at all and I was like yeah I guess it is kind of red I do see like a almost like a rash around my boob I've had body aches and she was like yes it definitely sounds like mastitis I'm just gonna call in some antibiotics for you they'll be ready you know in an hour and I was like okay I started taking those antibiotics and I will say within like day two of taking the antibiotics I started seeing a definite difference it wasn't as painful to like breastfeed and pump and the redness and the the red streaks were still there and the soreness was there but it just wasn't as painful my body aches started to fade my fever started to fade but she did tell me on the phone because i thought well because this is happening i need to stop you know what i'm doing i need to stop pumping and breastfeeding because obviously that's how it happened and the nurse on the phone was like do not stop like make sure that you are pumping or breastfeeding your baby frequently she said if you are doing it you know every five hours do it every three hours try to make sure that you're constantly trying to get that milk out and that kind of was a shocker for me I really didn't think that like all the other things I was kind of like eh, okay you know I get it antibiotics Tylenol ibuprofen you know put hot cloth on there soak in the bathtub but when she said to do not stop like keep going even though it's super painful you've got to try to just get it out I was like really <laughs> So I still have to go through this, um, but obviously the biggest reason for that is because if you don't and the milk just piles up in there and it doesn't come out, it's going to make it worse. Thankfully, it took about, it ended up being about almost five days before it got better, but that's because I waited two and a half days almost to even get any kind of help. Now, the second time around was just about a week ago that I got over it. So he is four months old now and uh, like I said earlier in this video, I'm definitely sure the first time I don't know how it happened y'all like it literally one day I was fine the next night I was in pain and all these things were happening to me But the second time around I definitely think it was because of the latch and I think the way that he fell asleep on my boob and kind of like yanking it in a weird position at the same time is why it happened it was only like an hour later and the fever the chills the the body aches all of those things it was like one after the other I was like oh no I could tell that it was happening again and I immediately started taking the antibiotics like within that day but this time around it took me seven days to get rid of this thing but I don't know why it took that long and it was so annoying because it hurt so bad this time around again I don't know why it hurt more this time than the first time but it was the most painful that I've ever gone through I was doing all the things y'all I wish I would have known about the sunflower stuff before that everything that I talked about in this video I was doing I was doing all of them around the clock constantly I'd fall asleep then I'd feel pain I'd either feel body aches it would wake me up so then I'd get in the bathtub and then I would have to pump and try to get some kind of milk or anything out of my boobs so then I would be doing that then I would do the haka and then there were times where I was like well, I really want to get back in the bathtub again so I'd fill a bowl with hot water put Epsom salt in it and then I would lean over and stick my boob in it <laughs> and try to soak it as long as I could I would put a hot towel on it I mean you name it I did it I did all of it and I think that all of those things worked for me in a way obviously they don't immediately take the pain and the the infection and all of that away but in those 
moments that you need a relief, it definitely gave me relief. Any of the things I talked about today, I definitely think will help. Obviously that's not going to like totally fix it and make it all better because once you have mastitis, or at least for me, I have to have those antibiotics to get rid of this infection. I can't just like let it run its course and hope for the best. So I'm so thankful that I had those. And finally, it finally got better, but I will say that I did not cry the first time I had mastitis. I wasn't, I was definitely in pain, but it wasn't so bad that I was like in tears and dreading having to pump or breastfeed. But the second time around y'all, I literally cried almost every single time I knew that I had to pump or breastfeed and try to get that milk out, which again was one of the reasons why I stopped trying to breastfeed him on that side and I would only pump it because then I could kind of have a little control over that. And my baby, not only that, but when he eats on me, he likes to, have you ever seen a cat breastfeed on their mama and they use their paws and they do that, you know, on the mommy's tummy and, and breast and they do this thing that's kind of like what my son does <laughs> when he eats on me he takes his hands and he puts them in a fist and he kind of like pushes on it which in a way it was good because he was like massaging my breast to get it down but when you're in that much pain and you have the suction feeling and that is painful and then you have somebody trying to push on that hard part of your boob it does not feel good and i kept trying to like push his hands away because he would push and his nails y'all he loves to like do this and scratch at me and so not only was he like pushing with his fist but then he would take his nails and scratch and then like try to pull pinch my skin and pull oh my gosh y'all <laughs> so bad and i remember my husband walked in when i was laying down with the baby and trying to feed him on that side and y'all i had my face buried in the pillow and i was just like oh i was just holding on with all my might crying and he was like, babe, I mean, this is horrible. I'm like, but I have to do it. Like, I have to, I can't stop. But that was the last time. Like, I'm not doing it anymore. That's when I told him, get some formula just in case we need it. I'm just going to try to pump on the side from now on. Now, I was still feeding him on the left. I was like, I can't do this anymore. Like, it hurts so bad. I need some kind of control over what is happening here. <laughs> Again, y'all, I definitely recommend the LV, obviously, because that's what I use. But any kind of pump that you can find that's cordless, that you don't have to have be plugged into a wall. Because like I said, for me, it was so nice to be able to do it in the bathtub. Don't submerge it in the bath though, obviously, because then the motor will go out. You can't use it anymore. That was it for me. And yeah, it was definitely not something that I wish on any of you guys. If you've never had it before, I hope and pray that you never get it. I hope and pray that I never get it again. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys learned something again. Remember, I am not a professional. I'm not a lactation consultant. I'm only letting y'all know the things that I've read up on, the advice that I've gotten before. I am referring those things to you guys, the things that I've tried, my journey. All the things that I'm telling you may not work for you. You may need something different. Always do your own research and always, always call a professional if you really need it. Um, again, I just want to put that disclaimer out there. I just want to be prepared to know the symptoms like I should have because I was not prepared and I had no clue and I should have jumped on it right away that first time. So I hope you guys know the symptoms and listen to your body and try your best to prevent it as much as you can. Again, y'all, thank you so much for watching this video and being a part of this Soul Tribe Mama family. I appreciate every single one of you guys in your comments, y'all. I seriously love being able to hear from y'all and I know that I can't get to every single person's comments sometimes and reply, but I do read them. When I have the time, I read them and I love hearing about y'all, whether you're pregnant and you're so excited to meet your baby or it's your fourth just like I've had and you're having it later in life, five or 10 years from your last baby. It's just so cool to have this little community and be able to have all these mamas to relate to and we can talk about all of these things. I really, really love that. Like. That is why I started this channel and I started sharing pregnancy and stuff. I always wanted to share that stuff with you guys. I love talking about it. I've always talked about this stuff with my friends anyways, especially my new mama friends that just had their first babies. And it's something that I enjoy and that I'm passionate about. And I'm just glad that you guys enjoy it as well and that we can all be a part of this together. So thank you, thank you for all of your comments, for watching my videos, for subscribing to my channel. I love it. So with that said, again, y'all, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up if you like this kind of content. That lets me know that you love it. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new because I would love to have you here. And I will see y'all on my next one.
Bye.